For my arts video contribution, I want to focus in on the world of martial arts, particularly on the current state of the most popular mixed martial arts sporting promotion, which is the UFC. This story has caught my eye recently. It's the one with the ongoing feud between YouTube celebrity Jake Paul and UFC president Dana White. Now, as much as I'm disinterested in Jake Paul personally, including literally every part of the beef where they just accuse each other of using drugs and all that, what did catch my eye was when Jake Paul provided an offer to the UFC. He said that he would retire from boxing and fight UFC fighter Jorge Masvidal if the promotion agreed to 1. Increasing the minimum fighter pay per fight to $50,000, 2. Guaranteeing fighters 50% of UFC annual revenues, and 3. Providing long-term healthcare benefits, especially for fighters who are suffering from symptoms relating to inflicted brain damage. Unsurprisingly, Dana White responded to Paul by pretty much dodging all these issues regarding fighter pay altogether. Instead, he focused more on all of the drug-related stuff, as well as some personal attacks on Jake Paul's manager. Chances are that if you're watching this video, you're probably somewhat invested in watching the UFC or even any other contact sports leagues like the NHL or NFL. For the purposes of this video, however, I'll be talking mostly about the UFC here, as they're far and away the worst offenders in terms of how they treat their athletes. With that said on all these points, similar arguments can be made for the NHL and NFL players as well. First of all, it needs to be asked why we, the viewers, should care about this issue at all. Often the main counter arguments to increasing fighter pay in the UFC often cite celebrities like Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey. These are fighters who have made millions on and off of the octagon. However, we'll soon find out that these kinds of fighters are massive outliers when compared to most UFC fighters today. And what's important to remember is that even though participation in martial arts is popular all around the world, training to compete in the already competitive world of MMA is expensive. Whether it's from the gym fees, the trainer fees, training partner fees, management fees, travel costs, specialized food diet costs, dietitian costs, etc. Because of this dynamic, what often happens is that even if you're an extremely talented fighter looking to go pro, if you happen to be living paycheck to paycheck, you're essentially A, forced to give up on fighting altogether and work immediately to pay the bills, or B, risk going into massive debt from all the aforementioned costs I mentioned just before. And this is all just for the chance of making it big in the UFC. The reason that I mentioned this hypothetical scenario is because for a lot of fighters today who are currently competing in the UFC, they're still on thin ice financially. Now, for the sake of research purposes, I wanted to calculate the stats of fighter salaries throughout a typical main UFC event today. The earliest one I could find where the State Athletic Commission actually released the official fighter pay info was back in UFC 263, which was held in Arizona in June of 2021. It was a solid fight card, highlighted by UFC superstar Israel Adesanya. I calculated the median fight salaries throughout the night to be around $69,000. Nice. However, these median averages change significantly when comparing fights from the main card, prelims, and early prelims. The median salary for fighters in the main card was about $241,000, while the median salary for fighters in the early prelims were just $38,000. However, unlike a lot of other professional sports leagues that offer annual contracts with at least some proportion of money guaranteed, the UFC utilizes a system in which fighters are paid on a per fight basis. All fighters receive a base show up salary when they show up to their fight and compete. The median show up salaries were $48,000, while the median show up salary for uh, early prelim fights were $24,000. At the highest end, fighters like Adesanya, of course, his show up earnings totaled half a million dollars, which made up the vast majority of his overall earnings that night. While on the lowest end, you had fighters like Terrence McKinney, who had a show up salary of just $12,000. Now, the reason why I wouldn't classify this kind of money as guaranteed, unlike other sports leagues, is because it depends on whether or not you as a fighter are healthy enough to compete on a fight. On average, UFC fighters will fight around two to three times a year. Now, if you think that number is way too little, you have to remember that much of that time spent in between fights is A, on recovering from fighting injuries from the previous match, of course. And then second of all, you have to train hard and study your next fighting opponent for months. Given the nature of the sport, it's also very possible that a fighter may receive long-term injuries, whether that be through their fight, their training, or while they're cutting their weight. Oh, that's another topic I gotta talk about one day. But what this all means is that an average UFC fighter may have an annual income of around $200,000 if they were to fight three times that year. But say one day they were to shatter their leg bones in combat, you know, Anderson Silva style, or tear their ACL by accident, or suffer a massive concussion. They'll be out for many months without pay. Worst case scenario is that if you're one of those up and coming fighters who make below the median salary, you might literally run out of money to spend on training costs, potentially forcing yourself out of the promotion altogether. In addition to their show up salary, fighters also receive various fighting bonuses for each match. The most significant of this is the win bonus where in most matches, the winning fighter receives about double the amount of what their show-up salary was supposed to be. Some fighters can also receive a $50,000 quote-unquote performance of the night bonus if they've had the most entertaining fight that night. 
At least within the eyes of Dana White, that is. And finally, there's the Venom Uniform deal, which grants $4,000 for fighters with one to three UFC fights under their belts, $4,500 for four to five, and then it goes all the way up to $21,000 for 21 plus fights, $32 for title challengers, and $42,000 bonuses for champion fighters. This bonus in of itself is quite controversial, since it replaced the old system in which fighters would wear their own sponsorships on their uniforms, often netting themselves more money compared to what this current Venom deal grants them today. Okay, sure, at this level, Level, one can argue that fighters at this level should be expected to win almost all their matches. But even in the most lopsided matchups, freak injuries can always occur. That's why I think the show-up salary is the most important category of all to consider. Because even if you're a young fighter who's as dominant as Anderson Silva was at the time, all it takes is a single kick to your opponent's shin and poof, not only did you lose half of what you're expected to earn, your fighting career might as well be over for good depending on how bad that injury was. Now, for reference, in UFC 263, they made $42 million off of six 600,000 pay-per-view sales alone. So if the fighter pay equated to just half of the revenue from pay-per-view sales alone, fighters in that event should have made around five and a half times more money on average. And that's only accounting for pay-per-view sales, which represents only a fraction of the UFC's total revenue each year. It is with our interest too as viewers that once a fighter does make it to the UFC, that they can just focus all of their work efforts on training alone. Instead of trying to like juggle another job on the side to pay their bills, we want to see better and better fighters coming into the sport over time and improving. This is one way to help do that. Now on a side note, as for the other sporting leagues, I'm generally fine with their minimum salaries as they're usually from half a million to a million per season. Now where other sports leagues can improve upon is with the minimum salaries for players in their minor slash developmental league systems. Often the minimum salary is around the fifty to $60,000 mark per season, which is just simply not enough when factoring similar kinds of personal fees in my opinion. Baseball has recently announced so that they would pay for housing costs of minor leaguers, which is definitely a good step in the right direction. I'm hoping to do another video sometime in the future that addresses both the UFC and NFL's issues when it comes to protecting their players' long-term mental health. All I'll say for now on that subject is that according to the study from Current Sales and Aberdeen, around 24% of MMA fighters receive some form of brain damage, as 71% of all MMA injuries are head-related. It is frightening to see time and time again what the symptoms of CTE have done to our beloved athletes throughout sports history, whether it be in the form of deadly violence, suicide, or both. I think what needs to be done to properly address that issue will be difficult to achieve in comparison to addressing this current issue of raising the minimum UFC wage to what I argue should be at least $100,000 worth of show up money each fight.